Welcome to Gaia's Vault, the biggest, most advanced, and most secure Minecraft prison built to date. With 24 outer chunk bands that are permanently on, 8 inner chunk bands that can be turned on at will, and 1 panic chunk band that can be turned on permanently, this prison is truly inescapable. If you want to see a dramatic overview of the prison, feel free to check out Sven's video. If you want to see the top 10 security features of this prison, feel free to check out Jerry's video. And if you just want to see the visitor process in full, also check out Jerry's other video. This is the guard video for the prison, so if you want to know how to guard this prison, you're in the right place. Otherwise, yeah, you can still watch if you want, don't really care. I'll take the view. So, let's get right into things, starting out in the warden's room. Starting out in the warden's room, we have the bed right here at the back of the warden's room, away from the control area. You can just set your spawn here, and you'll just respawn on this block. Right in front of it, we have the resupply station. You can walk over this. You should get all your gear, including weapons, full armor, but apparently it didn't work there for some reason. I'll check that out in a bit. Then behind that is the stasis chamber over on this wall. To use it, it's just like a normal stasis chamber. You grab ender pearls, and you can crouch on the edge, go over to the edge, and just throw it down. To make sure it can't be activated while you're offline or in a different dimension, tame the cat that's in the slot next to it, stand it up, and attach it with a lead to this fence. Now, whenever you're offline or in a different dimension, the cat will sit down, which will prevent it from being turn, uh, activated, just trust me on that. Heading over to this wall, we have the cancel auto panic. If somebody is trying to pearl in from the bottom below the guard areas, Auto panic will be triggered, and there'll be 20 seconds for you to either get over to this button and just sit at it so you can disable it later, or to press this button and just cancel it from being activated at all. Next, we have the AFK tunnel. This basically just sends you back and forth every 15 minutes and prevents anybody from mining in from above since it takes 18 minutes to mine obsidian. Next, we have the ender chest. This, just, this is just where you can store your stuff. Next to it is where the key card comes out of when you're teleporting yourself in. If we're finally on this wall, the lever that actually enables the FK mode, you need to flip this down for FK mode to work. Last two things in this room, actually last three things, sorry, is the guard bed. You can open and close this from here. The up is closed, down is open. And the guard portal, up is locked, down is unlocked. You can open the guard portal though with a button in the guard room when this is unlocked. Finally, there's a uh, x-ray station here you can see a little bit of the cells you can see a little bit of the guard areas and some redstone overall it's not super useful though moving on to the main warden control room on the floor is usually a map if you're using the world downloaded on a server with the proper plugin otherwise there's just a whole bunch of items for him so you could really put whatever you want here you could even just replace it with the carpet uh, heading from the left, you going clockwise. We have a button to turn on all the trunk bands. Press that, trunk bands turn on. The panic button trunk band does not turn on though, because that would trunk band this room if you did that. So, don't want to turn this on unless you absolutely have to. Let's just turn these off as we go around. On this wall here, these lamps represent all these trigger lockdown buttons. When one of these is pressed, one of these lamps will turn on, and that's how you know where lockdown is triggered from. Like if I press warden, uh, trigger lockdown here, this light turns on, lockdown enables, all the trunk bands turn on, all the guards are teleported, except for the warden because they're already in this room, and you're good to go. Continuing along, these are the three buttons for triggering a lockdown, ending a lockdown, and silencing the alarm. Note, lockdown and alarm are completely separate this one, where the only link they have is that lockdowns enable the alarm, but they don't disable the alarm when you turn off a lockdown. So you need to remember to press both these buttons when you're turning off lockdown. If you want, you can also put a lever on this button slot, and that'll completely prevent the alarm from going off at all. To the right, we have a lockdown alarm status. When these lights are on, that means they're active. If you like deaf note blocks, you can just tell by the alarm here, and lockdown if you turned off the alarm, you'll see here. Next, we have lights for the cell. North, east, south, and west in that order from left to right. If a light stays on after you press the end lockdown button, it just flashes. 
That means somebody, somebody's trying to put netherite into the backup respawn area, so you have to go check that out, probably kill them and take any stuff they had. Otherwise, these lights just turn off somebody breaks cobblestone, so it's probably not a huge deal. To the right of that is the lights for the first decon bed gate and the first decon low person door. If somebody tries to sneak in with two people here, this light will turn on and it'll kill them in there as well as trigger lockdown. If somebody tries to smuggle or replace TNT in the bed gate, this light will turn on and a lockdown will be triggered as well. Next, we have this wall the water tunnel exit, the exit tunnel, portal room TNT detector, portal hall detector, second decon bed gate, and daylight tunnel adder. All lights are on here. All pictures on screen of what shows are as well. Basically, if any of these are triggered, a lockdown is triggered, these lights turn on, and same as always. Next, we have the door out of here. To use it, you just work the snow block and pearl out. I'll do that in a second. And finally, we have the summon all guards button. This just triggers all the station chambers over in the guard room for teleporting the guards. On the ceiling, as you probably noticed by me walking around, these are the chunk band controls. When a light is on, that means the chunk band is on. When a light is off, that means the chunk band is off. While these are turned on by a lockdown, they're not locked on by a lockdown, so you can turn it off as needed during a lockdown. Let me just demonstrate that here. So I can just go through and turn these off. If I were to enable panic button lockdown, it also enables all the inner chunk bands. And right now, if chunk bands are enabled, I would be completely gone forever. Note, chunk bands don't work in single player, and they are disabled by default just to stop you from accidentally chunk banning yourself on a server. So let's turn these off and head to the armory. All right, starting at the door from the warden room. To get back into the warden room, you can go here and use a warden key card. Where did I put it? Do I not have it? I don't appear to have it. Hold on a second. All right, ignore that. So you put it in here, press this button. It'll teleport you over to the warden room. Oops. It'll come back out here. You can pick it up and put it back in your inventory. Heading back out here. Last thing over here is uh, cell spectator station access. If you drop down here, you're able to get to all the cells as well as to the cell tunnel. We'll go down there later. Heading over here and taking a right, you'll see the resupply station. You can get your potions from here, which is invisibility, strength, regen, and speed. If you go to the other side, you can get your items here. This is also where you respawn as a guard. I'll show you where the bed is in a second. And here, you get all your ender pearls, coarse fruit, blocks, food, stuff like that. As well as armor and weapons. Over here is where you actually get to your spawn point. You walk over to here, close the strap door, swim down, and your bed is down here, right behind this ender chest. This using, works using the bed glitch to teleport you right onto this pressure plate as soon as you spawn. Coming out from there, if you crouch and walk onto these pressure plates, you can trigger a lockdown. And these chests all have items that will help you in protecting the prison. The leftmost chests are empty, but after those two, you have the stuff for withers. Next, you have TNT and end crystals for having finally trapdoors, ladders, and some other stuff like buttons and pressure plates, as well as fishing rods. Heading over to here, you have water, lava, and an empty buckets for like milk. Two chests of that, two chests of food for like golden apples, golden carrots, and pumpkin pie and two chests for harming, healing, and regular arrows. Before, just finally two more empty chests. On this wall, there are station chambers for the guards. You can activate any one of them by looking down and right-clicking this note block. Note that this won't work if there are no cat, or if the cat for the guard is sitting down because the guard's offline or in the nether. There's also other chests here, so if you need to grab stuff, you can. On the end here, this is a guard list. You can have all your guards labeled in here, just for ease of access. 
On each exit from the guard room, there's a trunk ban door. This isn't a security door, it's just to stop you from accidentally trunk banning yourself. So if this light is on and this piston is down, don't like pearl past it to go into this area. Over here, through the, in the swimming area, there's a corridor down to the control rooms, as well as the cat areas for stasis chambers. You can just put a cat, you can tame one of these cats, hook it up to a lead, and have it standing in there, so that when you're offline or the nether, it'll sit down and stop you from being teleported, or attempting to teleport you. If you go up here, this is the warehouse. Uh, apparently this water is removed at some point. But basically, this is where the exit portal is for the guards. And a whole bunch of items are stored, like totems, coarse fruit, uh, I believe those buckets, beds, lingering potions, stuff like that as well. Right here is the resupply tunnel for the guards. The resupply, like lingering potions, harming potions, ender pearls, stuff like that. And finally, there's an emergency exit up here. So if you can't use the exit portal for revision, you can ender pearl all the way up here, swim out to here, stand on, hold on this block, throw an ender pearl straight out, and you'll land down there somewhere. Right around here. Careful not to walk too far back, as you will be chunk banned if you do. You can stay out of the cow, milk it if you need to, that's fine. So, that's it for the armory. Let's get on to the guard areas next. Alright, this is the utility stasis chamber room. This is just right next to the guard uh, stasis chambers. If you're going to a control room, you want to set your pearl in one of these stasis chambers, depending on where you're going. And just start off, we're going to go to the portal control room. So you throw out a pearl down here, and we can go swimming. This is normally way faster if you have boots, which I probably should have grabbed, but oh well. To get down to the portal control room, you can go down here, go straight, aka just follow the red sign, and take a left from here. We just throw a pearl, you just want to go straight all the way down. An alternate way to get down here is from this drop down here, which is underneath the warehouse, right here. And then from here, you just want to take a left, and if you're coming from there, go straight, just follow the red sign. Up here, and then portal glitch to the floor or ceiling. Once you've done that, you're in the portal control room. This needs the portal control keycard, obviously. You just throw that next to the yellow block. From there, you can use all these controls. To let somebody in, you enable the outer portal and inner portal. You don't need to disable the trap portal as the inner portal is the priority portal. And to let somebody out, you need to enable the inner portal. Wait for them to go in, disable the inner and trap portals, wait for them to get out, and then you can just turn off everything. You can also reset controls to their default position just by taking out the keycard. You can uh, use this, this x-ray station here to watch the portal itself. And if you want to trigger a lockdown, there's a button right here for that, on the red concrete. Finally, for when leaving this room, just press this button here, called Activate Stasis. And those will hold you back to the stasis chamber area. To the right of that is the first decon stasis chamber. So put on here. We'll head there next. Before we head there, let me just grab some boots. To get to first decon control, you need to take a left, drop down, and then take a right, which is the purple sign. From there, you just go up, and you can pearl glitch to this floor. Once you're in here, the keycard will be immediately to your left. Use the first decontamination control keycard. Go just throw it next to the yellow block. And you have access to controls now. The window shield is to the right. That just lets you see things. The first control you're going to need to open is the portal hall door. That's just the door all the way down there. Once the visitor walks through there, you can close that and open up the outer bed door. This lets them set their spawn. After that, you close that, open up the inner bed door, and kill them. Once they die, they'll respawn over here. When they walk out from where the inner bed door is, you just close it behind them. Then you can unlock the one person door. 
The light here signifies which state it's in. With it being on, it means it's unlocked. Off means it's locked. If you need to lock it manually, there's a button on the left for that. You can just press that and it'll close. For example, if somebody's being stubborn, you can lock it. That'll trigger a lockdown. It may also kill them too, so don't worry. Finally, there's the Daylight Tunnel Editor. That opens up this door right here. Use that to let them get to the second decontamination. Once they're in there, they're pretty much on the second decontamination. You can close this behind them, and you're good to go. The observation x-ray station right here can view the hallway as well as a bit of the bed gate. If somebody does drop an item there, you can't see it, but it's not a huge issue as it'll be picked up by the hoppers if they try to smuggle. Otherwise, the button for trigger lockdown is right here on the corner. Get your key card back out, you just press this button and stand in front of this lamp. And to get back, you press this button at the edge here and you get teleported. Next, you have second decontamination control. Just throw a pearl down there. And instead of going left this time, we're going to go right. From there, you want to go left and follow the green sign and take a right right away. We're going up, and now you're in second decontamination control. If I could roll glitch properly. There we go. The key card reader is to your right for this yellow concrete. Just throw that down. The controls are turned on. The window shield is immediately to the left. And the first ever you want to flip is the daylight tunnel inner door. That'll open up that door right there. Which is on the opposite side of the outer door, obviously. Next, we have the outer bed gate. That lets them set their spawn right there. When they set their spawn, close it behind them. And then open up the inner one. You can, like, kill them. Once they're dead... You can wait for them to walk out and then close the store behind them before heading all the way down here and opening up the water tunnel outer door. That door is just right here. After they walk past that door, just close it behind them and you can open up the inner door. From there, normally you're going to want to stay inside this x-ray glitch station so you can watch what the visitor is doing. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just not going to be here and assume that the visitor is perfect in every way. So once the visitor walks past here, he goes past the door, both of them behind him, you'd get into there, and then tell the person in cell control or cell access what they're doing. For now, I'm just going to close everything up, take my key card out. If you need to trigger a lockdown, the button's right here on the corner, and then teleport myself to the guard room. After this is multi-purpose stasis chamber, we'll go over that in a bit. For cell access controls, you need to walk over to this room here, put your cell access keycard into this dropper, and pearl through this door. From here, you can take the keycard to the ceiling barrel right there, and let's get started. First button you need to press is the dispense ender pearl button. This just gives the visitor ender pearl to use for their stasis chamber. Once they show their stasis chamber and are, the, and are out of the way, just flip this lever down. This will let the visitor walk over to the cell. From here, there's two things you could do. If it's the visitor, you just open up one of these cell tunnels, for example, north. Or, if it's the prisoner, you want to make sure a guard is following the prisoner, open up the bed access trapdoor, and then open up one of the cells from the we go into. We'll go over what the guard following them has to do in a bit. Either way, if it's the visitor, after they're done inside the cell, and well, actually, first, after they get into the cell and it's confirmed, you just need to close the tunnel behind them, and when they're done, teleport them out using this button here. That'll bring them to the six chamber, where they'll then be allowed to go to the exit bed. While it's not necessary to them set their spawn point, I'd recommend it just in case something weird happens. So you can open up this bed here by pulling that lever down, wait for them to set their spawn, close it again, and then kill them. That's basically it. If for whatever reason a guard needs to access the shulker area, you can open up the bed access trapdoor, the tunnel they need to go into, and shulker access. This just lets them get to the shulker if they need to kill a prisoner that somehow got stuck in there or something. 
So let's reset these in an old position and go over the security features of the prison. A couple things I realized I should probably note before we actually switch topics is that first to resupply pretty much every uh, dispenser for like harming push on the stuff, you need to go into this tunnel, which takes a guard access key card. A guard key card, I should say. I think I might have a slightly broken version of the prison. Yes, I do. This is fixed in the release, so don't worry about that. Anyways, once you're in here, you can crawl through, open up these levers, and fill up the necessary barrels. Like, this one is harming two lingering potions. You can repeat this all the way to the end of the tunnel, which this is where the uh, multi-purpose stasis chamber comes in. There's a button at the end of this tunnel to activate the stasis chamber. So you can close doors behind you and not have to worry about going all the way back through. Then, once you're done, come back over to here, press this button again, and your keycard will be spit out. Finally, to use the exit portal, if sending a guard out, all you have to do is go through the portal, wait a second, and then go back to the overworld. If you're trying to get a guard in, have him go to the nether, wait until all the portals close, and then tell him to start going through, and about... Two seconds after you tell them to go through, open up the portal, and they'll appear inside. At least they should, in theory. Now that's it for the guard areas, let's go on to the security features. One of the first things you'll likely notice if you don't have the resource back on are these giant beams coming from inside the prison. These are indestructible end crystals. If I just go into the entry hallway or cells, these end crystals are invincible in survival mode, so if you try to break or place any blocks, you can't. You can't. I can place water, boss. I can place water, but that's about it. Can't break the end crystals, even if I shoot it, it doesn't do anything. Inside the cells, the same story. There's just end crystals. So I'd recommend you have the resource pack on just so they're invisible. It's not necessary though. Feel free to do what you want if you want the psychological torture by having end crystals in your face 24-7. Anyways, aside from the end crystals, there's also just trap doors everywhere, so you can't place any blocks. Then in the portal room, there's signs here to detect if they're broken, it'll set off the alarm, trigger a lockdown and chunk menu. If safe for which any observer actually. This observer here, if you try to tamper with the guard entrance area by blocking off the stasis chamber, not stasis chamber, pearl glitch spot, trigger a lockdown chunk ban you. Same with the area right here. If TNT is set off, it will likely destroy the string and trigger a lockdown. This bed right here, if I open it, give me a second. This bed can detect when you place any block in it, but the one that's relevant here is probably TNT. If you place just TNT and don't light it in time, it'll be pushed out of the way. All right, and now if I place TNT and light it quickly, uh, that. That was not supposed to happen. That's supposed to just close the door and keep it closed. It was working properly, it prevents the TNT from doing any damage, but in this case, TNT blew up, did damage, triggered lockdown, and chunked the engine. So, basically, even if it doesn't work properly, it still is fine. Can we turn off the alarm again? Give me a second. Alright, coming through here, the one person door is the same as Hades Vault. You stand here when it's locked, or the two people, it'll set off the alarm, try to kill you, you might get chunk banned first, and that's basically it. Coming through here, just a note for visitors, before you walk through here, you'll need to crouch and then walk. If you try to walk and then crouch, then you could do that too, I guess. Or if you just try to walk forward, you can't crouch after that closes, so you need to walk backwards. In front of the, in front of this door here, they're actually not in front of this door, underneath this door. There's observers that if you try to push this block or break the piston, will just set off a lockdown. Say, uh, right here, if you try to mess with this trap door, it'll trigger a lockdown. If you try to snuggle items through here, it'll trigger a lockdown. And that's pretty much it <laughs> for that area. 
this piston right here is not watched, so feel free to mess that all you want if you want to, uh, if you figure out a way to. And I should also mention that I forgot to mention earlier. This door, if you break one of the pistons or try to push a block out of the way, it'll trigger a lockdown. After the second decon bed gate, over here, there's an observer in front of the door. So if you try to tamper with that, it'll trigger a lockdown. If you try to tamper with this door right here, trigger a lockdown. This side of the door here, trigger a lockdown. Uh, after you get past the cell though, there's no detectors. But once we get inside the cell, you try to make it break a piece of cobblestone, it'll trigger a lock. Well, not a lockdown, it'll trigger an alarm. If you try to get netherite items into this room here, you'll trigger a lockdown or alarm. And if you somehow manage to get all the way down here, well, you won't trigger a lockdown, but you can't do anything. So uh, have fun. Finally, heading all the way down to the uh, bottom of the prison. If you try to pearl glitch through the bedrock in the middle area where you won't be chunk banned by the inner chunk bands, you'll trigger an auto panic, which if the guards either choose to manually panic after that starts, or if they don't start, uh, cancel the auto panic, we'll chunk ban you here. And we just trigger it, you can hear the alarm. This will flash this light here, play this alarm, and you have 20 seconds to get over to the spawn and turn it off. If you don't turn it off, it'll turn on the trunk band and you'll be permanently trunk banned. So have fun. Aside from that, as I mentioned earlier, there's eight inner trunk bands that can be toggled, 24 outer trunk bands that can not be toggled but are permanent. There's also trap portals, which I've briefly mentioned. That means that if you try to make a portal anywhere inside the prison, it'll just take you to here. This is inside the range of the outer trunk bands, so you'll just be trunk banned. Even if you aren't, you'd be portal trapped, so yeah. Then for the walls and sh the shell, the bottom is a wither heavy Swiss cheese type. The walls are the same as Hades Vault because this is where I got the walls for Hades Vault from. This prison right here. And the ceiling is just solid because there's no real way to go down through obsidian without just mining. If you try to mine, you'll have to mine in the middle, which you can't do because of the 15 minute AFK timer. Finally, above the visitor areas, there's Swiss cheese 3 4. This is V3 since I'm running a slightly older version of the prison, but V4 will be released in the final build. So. It should be actually completely chorus proof. I may put it on Hades Vault as just one last update, but we'll find out. So, yeah, look forward to that. Otherwise, let's just go over some things you can do during an attack. Alright, starting from the outside, this is the first attack you'll likely have to deal with, which is withers on the outside of the prison. Some things you, sh you can do to prepare for this on the inside is trigger a lockdown. Send a guard outside to figure out where they're attacking from, and then toggle inner trunk bands as necessary to stop where they're coming from from working. Otherwise, it's mostly just a uh, method of just dealing with the withers manually. Maybe after the attack is dealt with, having guards outside just patrolling. But otherwise, it's not a huge concern because both the outer trunk bands and inner trunk bands will stop somebody from just using withers to mine inside. Next, we just have TNT inside the prison. If somebody tries to place TNT side over these doors, they'll trigger a lockdown and just not do anything. So, guards don't do anything about that. Finally, we have Silverfish, Silverfish Strat, which you could either do two things. One, immediately chunk ban them, which means you have to not let visitors in either. So, that's one way to do it. Or, if you want to try to make it so visitors can still show up, have them come over to this side of the prison to within the chunk ban four or five, this will keep them trunk banned and should still allow you to have visitors. It's up to you whether or not you want to rook visitation privileges if somebody tries to pull a silverfish strat. Otherwise, that's all the attack methods we really have planned. If stuff happens inside of the cells or stuff like that, you can view the guard handbook, and that goes more into depth of the what if scenarios, not the basic most likely attacks.
All right, finally, we're just going to go over the procedures for getting a new prisoner into the prison. I am all alone on this right now because it's single player world. People are working on the main prison. So let's just get right into it. As a guard, you want to drop down to this cell station observation area. And then go down this trap door. You'll probably want to land here and then possibly pearl up into the cell hallway. So you can watch the prisoner be brought in. Then you want to have the prisoner go down first. You want to be behind the prisoner. Just so they can't like sit up here and just like, haha, you can't get to me. Then once they drop down, you drop down with them. You then swim into a crawling animation. Go down to the cell that's assigned to them. In this case, the north cell. Once you get to the end of it, so give me a second. You want to watch them, make sure they right click the bed. Try to listen or look at the subtitles for the block breaking sound. If they do that, we say left click the bed, not right clicked. So just have them right click the bed. Otherwise, it's still pretty much just mostly trust. After they do that, kill them and they'll respawn inside the cell. After that's done, you can get teleported out by another guard and this can be closed off permanently. And finally, one last guard thing I forgot to mention. If you drop down this trapdoor here, you can get to a cell observation area down one of these drops. All these are the same, so you, this is just pay attention here. If you take a left here, you can actually get down to the observation room. If you go straight, you can get to the not really smuggle room, but just like this room here. If you look inside this barrel, let me get rid of the sword. You can see any items that a prisoner somehow managed to get up into the secondary decon area or secondary respawn area that are another right. You have, you'll know that someone is in here if the light just flashes with the cell when you try to turn off the lockdown or press the disable lockdown button. Then next up here, you can swim over to this way, get into this composter, and right click this note block. That'll let you see into the cell. Once you're done, or if you have visitors misbehaving, you can use pumpkin pie to open this. And then either teleport yourself back using this button. This is just the multi-purpose stasis chamber. Or you can go into this piston here. This will automatically teleport the visitor out and drop into the cell. Finally, in this room, we have a hopper here. This is just for putting food in for the prisoners. By default, it's bread, but it can be whatever you want, like fish, potatoes, poisonous potatoes, spider eyes, or I don't care. It's your prison. Or you're the guard of the person. And that should be that for the guard areas. Alright, and that about does it for Guy's Vault. If you have any questions, feel ask him, feel free to ask them in the description. Or preferably in my Discord, as that's the easier place to answer them. If you want to watch Sven's video or Jerry's videos, they're in the description. And otherwise, I'll be doing a stream on uh I don't know when, but sometime soon. I'll create a community post about it. There will be answering more questions, possibly doing some escape attempts. So feel free to subscribe so you can see that. Otherwise, if you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe even. And if you didn't like it, feel free to dislike and leave constructive criticism in the comments. I gladly take that and try to improve my work. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next time.